Imagine if a well-known anti-evolutionist, known for thinking that dinosaurs walked with man, came up with a new show named specifically because of you. Well, that is exactly what happened when Kent Hovind started his Whack an Atheist Wednesday show. His reason? Because I kept having a dig at his ridiculous reasons for evolution not being true. Going as far to call himself Dr. Kent the Science Gent, he has now decided that he's going to debunk Google. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Yes, Kent Hovind and I have had a few back and forths over the last year, which culminated in me offering to go over to his dinosaur adventure land and debunk him in person if he passed a short test. Well, he dodged that and decided to debate conspiracy cats instead. I'm not sure if he was prepared for that. Recently, Kent has decided in his infinite wisdom that he's going to take on Google regarding evidence for evolution. We simply have to watch this one, don't we? Let's watch Kent as he warms up. Well, Google and all the people writing the uh, software for that are still presenting the same old tired arguments for evolution. Fossils provide solid evidence that organisms from the past are not the same as those found today. Fossils show a progression of evolution. No, they do not. Yes, they do. Just saying no, they don't doesn't make it true. Fossils show that something died. End of story. That looks pretty convincing to me, don't you think? Right? Okay. The fossil record. There's no such thing as a fossil record. If you, see, I don't have to change my arguments because they're right. They said, one guy said, Hoven uses the same old argument. Same old slides, yeah. Bothers you, doesn't it? Truth doesn't change. When I taught math, <clears throat> two plus two was four. Any other answer would be wrong. Mm -hmm. If you find a fossil in the dirt, all you really know is it died. Well, yes, but you can figure out so much more in today's day and age. They can tell us how the organism died, and they can tell us how long ago it lived. They can infer its size, its shape, its diet, even what its internal organs were like. You don't know it had any kids, and you sure couldn't prove it had kids that lived. Yeah, I found a fossil. This one had seven children. Right, you can tell that from the bone. <laughs> Well, no, but that's not what happens anyway. As usual, Kent, you're thinking in timescales that are way too small. And the kid they lived, and what color tennis shoes they had on? Okay. You could never prove it had different kids other than its kind. Why do evolutionists claim bones in the dirt can do something living animals cannot do? You say, where's the animals today producing something other than their kind? And that is something that is never said or expected. The change is gradual. There's a reason why Richard Dawkins named his book Climbing Mount Improbable. It's similar to watching your children grow. From day to day, you won't notice a difference in how they look. But after 10 years, they'll look very different indeed. I mean, we had two cows have a calf in the last month. Guess what? It's going to grow up and be a cow. And why wouldn't it? But make no mistake, cows are still evolving, just very, very slowly. Our chickens have a lot of eggs, and when we let them hatch, guess what they turn out to be? Breakfast? Chickens. Ah, yes, of course. Our parakeets, one of them just laid a bunch of eggs, about ten of them, I think, like ten eggs in there. I, I would be willing, before we even open the egg, I'd be willing to bet what's in there. <laughs> a T-Rex. A T-Rex, that's right. <laughs> Where is the evidence of any fossils forming today? Where is the evidence of any animal producing offspring other than its kind today? Well, this is all down to whether or not you know how fossils form. And the main way that happens is if an animal dies and is buried in mud or silt. Over huge amounts of time, that sediment hardens into rock. Again, over time, water in the rock dissolves any skeleton and minerals take its place. That is your fossil. You will never, and I mean never, see a fossil form over the course of a human lifetime. You guys claim fossils are evidence for evolution. You've got to be insane to believe something so stupid. 
Evolution happens over eons, huge amounts of time. Fossils by their very nature take eons to form. It's not rocket science, Kent. Luther Sunderland asked evolutionists what evidence they had for their theory. The British Museum of Natural History has the largest fossil collection in the world. When the senior paleontologist was asked why he did not show the missing links in his book, he said, I fully agree with your lack of with your comments on the lack of evolutionary transitions in my book. If I knew of any, wait, 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 Colin, you got the biggest fossil collection in the world at your fingertips and you don't know of any, neither does anybody else. There aren't any. Kent, this book was from 1988. Just one example. In 2008, two Australopithecus sediba partial skeletons were unearthed. Both showed numerous features that match skeletons from the Homo genus. There have been countless discoveries made since 1988, so your point is irrelevant. He said, I would certainly have included them. There's, not, there's no such fossil. See, there are no missing links. The whole chain is missing. There's no chain. It's not just a link you're missing, guys. The whole chain does not exist. See, dogs produce dogs. Cows produce cows. There's no link between them, none. Well, how do you suppose cows got here, Kent? You do realise they were artificially selected by humans, don't you? DNA evidence shows that all cows, every single last one of them, descended from a small herd of wild ox that lived 10,500 years ago. DNA, Kent. You can't argue with that. What's the strongest evidence for evolution, Googled today? DNA. Whoa. Similar DNA sequences are the strongest evidence for evolution from a common ancestor. Ah, I see that you are going to argue with that. Published a couple months ago. Whoa. So you think DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, is proof for evolution. DNA is incredibly complex. The complexity of DNA is a fabulous video. You've got to watch this, what is it, uh, six, seven minutes long. Just type in the complexity of DNA. It's only got a thousand views when I saw it. You, it's got to get, everybody ought to watch that one. I'll save you all the bother until it's a video about trying to debunk DNA as something that evolved independently. Its core argument is that DNA makes protein and is also made of protein, so therefore it follows that only God could have created both DNA and proteins at the same time. This is a poor, poor argument. Your DNA is made from proteins and proteins are made from amino acids. Amino acids are made from carbon, nitrogen and oxygen. Not really too hard to find that lying around on a brand new fresh earth, is it, Kent? That, Eugene, E-U-G-E-N-E, -E, and the last name is J-E-O-N-G. Did a fabulous job showing how phenomenally complex DNA is. This textbook says we've got evidence from evolution from molecular biology, from DNA sequences. Darwin speculated all forms of life are related through, common, through descent with modification from earliest organisms. This speculation has been verified. This is a bold-faced lie. It has not been verified, certainly not with DNA. Of course it has. Bearing in mind that Darwin knew nothing about DNA as we know it, the postulation was genius. This molecule, the DNA molecule, is so complicated, it is mind-boggling to even think about the complexity. Those little, it's like a twisted ladder. The little rungs on the ladder each carry a piece of information. You might have eight or ten of those rungs on the ladder to tell you what kind of hair color you're going to have. So if you've got blonde hair, but you marry someone who's got brown hair, they're going to get half the DNA from you and half from them. <coughs> and one may be more dominant than the other, and the baby, some of the babies may have blonde hair, some may have brown hair. It's all in that code. That code is beyond comprehension in its complexity. Kent displaying his incredible prehistoric views there. Kent, it's 2020, of course. Marriage is not a precursor to procreate. If you took that long ladder and twisted it, DNA molecule, and then as it twists, it also starts twisting again. You ever twist some rope around and then pretty soon it starts looping again and again and again? And all that DNA is the information to make everything about you. Everything is found in that code. And I assume that it's a coincidence, is it, that chimpanzees' code matches 99% of ours? 
Of course, Kent waffles on a bit more about DNA, explaining that something this complex could only ever have been created. Time is the best creator, Kent. Myself, and uh, to a lesser extent you, are good evidence of that. So what are the three, this is from Google again. What are the three main evidences, lines of evidence for evolution? Well, one of them is from fossils, from biogeographical evidence. Oh, and anatomical evidence. Really, is that the best main lines of evidence for evolution you guys can come up with from PBS? Yep. Kent continues to try and debunk Google for another 15 minutes, unsuccessfully of course. Is there a reason that Kent keeps going after evolution? Is he worried about it? I'll let you guys decide. And Kent, it's been a pleasure. Consider yourself thoroughly whacked. Well, there we go, a fantastic Tim Fall Tuesday there of Miss Kent. If you enjoyed it today, then please, please do like the video and give it a subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. I've been Simon Dan, have yourself a great week and I'll see you all on Friday for some high profile debunking. See you all then.